close your eyes and make yourself comfortable. Just allow your eyes to gently close and focus on your breathing. Just let all your troubles just float away. Take a deep breath in through your nose and slowly and gently breathe out through your mouth. Again, take another deep breath and slowly and gently breathe out through your mouth. One last time, deep breath in and slowly and gently breathe out through your mouth. Just bring your breathing back to its normal rhythm and just relax. Letting all your thoughts just drift away. Now imagine yourself standing on your own private magical island. A place that is just yours. And here in this place, you are safe, you are loved, and you are protected, always. Now this magical island of yours is surrounded by the bluest ocean. And the water sparkles and shines like thousands of diamonds, all glittering in the sunlight. And above your island is a rainbow. A beautiful, huge rainbow of many colours. Can you see it floating above your island? Can you see its magnificence in the sky above you? The purples and the blues, the greens and the yellows, the oranges and the reds. You can even see silver and gold too. What other colours can you see? Each time you breathe in, your rainbow becomes larger and larger until it fills the whole sky above you with so many beautiful colours. It's amazing. Now imagine that you're standing on a long sandy beach and you can smell the fresh, clean, salty air and it tickles your nose a little bit but it feels warm and nice on your skin. You can hear the sound of seagulls flying above you rising so high and then swooping down towards the gentle waves trying to catch their dinner. But the fish are very quick and they swim off at a rate of knots, laughing very loudly as they go. Can you see them? Can you hear them? You turn your attention to the beautiful deep blue ocean. And you watch each gentle wave moving so gracefully. And you watch the sparkles from the sunlight bounce on the surface of the water. It's so bright, but it doesn't hurt to look at it. You start to walk towards the vast ocean, feeling the sand beneath your feet and in between your toes. And it feels so warm and soft on your skin. Breathe in the fresh ocean air. Oh, you feel so peaceful here, so calm and relaxed, and it's all yours. As you look around you, you notice up ahead a long wooden dock leading out into the beautiful blue water. So you decide to go and have a look around it, wondering if you might see anything else. Is there anything else to see? As you walk along the dock, you can see below you the crystal clear water and you can even see the most colourful fish swimming on by. It's then that you notice that there is something at the end of the dock. It kind of looks a bit odd. It looks like a big glass ball and it's just floating in the water and you wonder what on earth could it be? As you reach the big glass ball, you realise that it's a small, well, kind of like a submarine, really. Its glass door is open and you see inside 
that there is the most amazing chair filled with soft cushions of many, many different colours. You decide to climb inside and sit down on the chair and you find that it is the softest chair you have ever sat on and it completely fits your body. You think that this would make an amazing place to sleep. As you sit there, the door gently closes and you see in front of you a little note and it says, Hello friend, this glass submarine is just for you. It's for you to go on a journey beneath the sea, to venture out and to explore the world under the big blue ocean. Wow, how exciting is that? You can't wait to explore. But how do you start the engine, you wonder? You look down at your feet and you see that there are pedals, just like on your bicycle at home. There is also a steering wheel, like the ones in a car. Well, you think it looks easy enough. So, you take hold of the steering wheel and begin to pedal. The glass submarine moves slowly and gently forward. And you can see the small waves washing all around you as you move. You begin to pick up a bit of speed and you pedal through the beautiful waves. And as you do, you hear in the distance the sound of whales as they sing to each other. You can't see them, but you can hear them. As you pedal, you notice that your little glass submarine has now started to go beneath the waves. You watch as the water rises and rises until you're completely under the water. Wow, this is amazing. The water is so clear and you can see a very, very long way. And you can now see the whales far out ahead of you. And you watch them as they swim so gracefully with long, slow movements. And you think that they are very beautiful indeed. You see all around you lots and lots of colourful fish. Big ones, small ones, even squat fat ones. And you see floating past you two jellyfish deep in conversation with each other. And they smile at you as they pass by. How wonderful is that? You see a family of octopus darting past. And it's as if they are playing a game of catch, chasing each other and having lots of fun. And then they disappear off into the distance. You see a shark swim by with a top hat on and a cane tucked under his fin. How odd. He raises his hat as he passes you and he says, Good day. He is followed by lots of baby sharks, all swimming quickly, trying to keep up with him. And it's then that you realise that, well, actually, he's a teacher and he's taking the baby sharks out on a field trip. You look around you and you keep pedalling along in your glass submarine, thoroughly enjoying yourself. And you can see so many different underwater creatures that you don't even recognise some of them. Well, that's because you've never seen them before. There's so many of them. You decide to go deeper down into the ocean. And as you do, you see something swimming towards you. As it gets closer, you see that it is a mermaid with very beautiful and very, very long blonde hair floating all around her. She gives you the biggest grin and waves hello to you. And you wave back as she swims on by, followed by all her dolphin friends. And there are lots of them. You can see the coral on the ocean floor and it is wonderful. So many different shapes and sizes. So many beautiful colours. Some of the coral remains still and just stays upright, whilst other coral gently floats backwards and forwards, just swaying in the cool, calm waters. 
You can even see tiny little fish sheltering in amongst it, swimming in and out, looking for some food. Oh, you think this is so wonderful. Up ahead of you, you see little twinkling lights. And you wonder what it is. It kind of looks like a pathway leading you to somewhere. And there are lots of those little lights too. So for just a little while, go and explore this underwater world. Follow the lights. See where they lead you to. Maybe it's an underwater city. Maybe other people live there. Maybe it's a mermaid city. Or maybe it's just full of all the different sea creatures, all living together very happily in their very own underwater world. Now, wouldn't that be fun? Wow, now that was exciting, wasn't it? How lovely. But now it's time for you to return. But it's a long trip home. So you decide to lie back and have a little sleep. Just for a few minutes, of course. You lean back in your comfy chair and close your eyes for just a little bit. And even though your eyes are closed, you remember in your mind all of the wonderful things that you have seen today. And don't worry, your little glass submarine will guide you gently home. It knows the way, you know. You smile to yourself, feeling so peaceful, so calm, so relaxed, as you sink deeper and deeper into your comfy chair with lots of soft cushions. You take a deep sigh, relaxing even further, sinking down and down, 
sinking down and down into blissful sleep, feeling ever so happy. You take a breath and you sigh it back out, big long sigh, as you go deeper and deeper into sleep. Your eyes feel so heavy now, so relaxed, so peaceful and calm, but you feel so very, very happy. And you drift off to sleep, feeling so peaceful, so wonderful, and dreaming all about the things you have seen today. And the really best bit about this day is that when you wake up, you will be back in your very own bed. And don't forget, there are many more places for you to visit in this beautiful underwater world. But for now, have a little sleep and just rest. Night night. Now imagine that you're standing on a bright pink path and it feels very soft as you begin to walk on it. And as you walk, It feels like your feet are sticking to it a little bit. How strange. Hmm. So you keep walking. You look ahead of you and you see that the path is a bit windy. It's not straight at all. And you wonder where it leads. So you decide to follow it and see. And as you walk, you notice the tall trees swaying gently in the breeze. And you can hear the sounds of the birds singing to each other. You can even hear some small animals scurrying in the grass. And you wonder what they're doing. You think that they're probably looking for something to eat. Or maybe just having fun playing with their friends. You can't see them now. They're moving far too quickly. You follow the path as it snakes through the trees. And they are so tall, these trees, that you can't see the top of them. But you can see the sunshine breaking through the tops of the branches though. And it almost looks like stars shining in the daylight as it peeks out through the highest branches. Suddenly, you come across a bright pink fence with a gate in the middle of it. And there's a sign on the gate and it says, Please enter if you want to have the best night's sleep ever. Ugh. You think that sounds like a very good idea indeed. The fence and the gate are made of the same stuff that the path is made of. And you think to yourself that the more you look at the fence and the gate and the path, it kind of looks like icing. Sticky, gooey icing. Well, that would explain why your feet have been feeling like they were sticking to the path now, wouldn't it? You open the gate and walk through. On the other side of the gate is something quite amazing. You can see a big blue lake and it has an island in the middle of it. The pink sticky gooey path is still there and it leads down to the water's edge where there is a little boat waiting just for you. You hurry down the path feeling ever so excited now. And as you reach the little boat, you see that someone is waiting for you. That someone is a very cheeky monkey with a big grin on his face. And he says, come on now, come on, I've been waiting for you. The monkey has on a stripy green and yellow t-shirt, bright orange shorts and a big purple hat with a feather sticking out of it. He's very colourful. You happily jump into the boat and sit down next to the monkey, whose name is Sausage, by the way. He says this is because he just loves sausages. He has them for his breakfast. He has them for his lunch. He has them for his dinner. He even has them for a bedtime snack too. My word, that's a lot of sausages. No wonder they call him Sausage. And you think that if he keeps eating that many sausages, You'll start to look like one. Now that 
that you've settled in your seat, Sausage begins to row. He is really quite strong, and he seems to be rowing very quickly indeed, because within minutes you've arrived at the island in the middle of the lake. You jump out of the boat and turn to thank Sausage for bringing you here. But he's already off, he's rowing again. He shouts goodbye but carries on rowing. Wow, he really does row fast. He's halfway across the lake already. You take a good look around you and what you see is wonderful. The whole island, well, it looks like everything's made of sweets. Oh my, I like sweets. There is icing all over the ground and it's very spongy. The trees are made of sweets. The flowers are made of sweets. And there are massive donuts all over the place. Donuts, yeah, big donuts. Donuts with blue icing, yellow icing, chocolate icing, every kind of icing. They're everywhere. And it's then you see another sign. And this sign says, this is where the sleepy donuts live. So please don't shout. Thank you. Sleepy donuts. Who on earth could they be, you wonder? As you take a closer look around, you see that all the donuts are actually asleep. Some are sleeping in hammocks. Some are sleeping on beanbags. And some of them are just sitting propped up by the trees and are quietly snoring as they slumber. Oh, wow, you think this place is so fabulous. You walk quietly around, taking care not to wake the sleeping donuts. And soon you come across a little house. Now this house is made of licorice, red licorice. It has a marshmallow chimney. It has sponge cake windows and its roof is made of toffees, lots and lots of toffees. Ooh, they look ever so nice. It has flowers all around it. And they're all made of sweets, sweets of every kind. How fantastic is that? As you stand there, looking at the amazing little house, you hear a voice call your name and it says, Come in, I've been waiting for you to arrive. Sausage told me you were coming. You've no idea how Sausage could have told him you were coming. Maybe he had a mobile phone and let him know that way. You walk inside and you see before you another great big donut. This one is all covered in pink icing and he has the most amazing sleepy brown eyes with the kindest smile you have ever seen. He grins at you and tells you his name is Cecil and this is Donut Island. He already knows your name. He tells you that this is the place to come if you want to have a wonderful night's sleep. You look around the little house and you see that it's enchanting. It has a little log fire burning brightly and giving off the most wonderful glow. It has donut shaped bean bags everywhere and there are little lamps in each corner of the room. And there's a big old bookcase filled with all the stories that you love best. Cecil tells you to take a seat in one of the beanbags. So you choose the most comfiest one and sit down. Oh my, you think you could go to sleep right now. It's so comfy. It's like this beanbag was made to fit your body. Cecil hands you a great big mug of hot chocolate to drink. It has marshmallows in it and it has lovely thick squirty cream on the top of it. Mmm, and it smells lovely. You take a sip and it really is delicious. It makes you feel all warm and tingly inside. Then Cecil tells you that everyone that comes here, they come to have a nap or to have a great night's sleep. He asks you which one you would like. So you tell him you would like a great night's sleep. Cecil tells you that he can help you to sleep. He tells you that he will make sure that this will be your best night's sleep ever. First, he gives you a 
marshmallow pillow. First, he gives you a marshmallow pillow for your head and you can rest it. Then he places a marshmallow blanket on you that is so soft and squishy, you can already feel yourself getting sleepy. Cecil picks up a little bag and puts his hand inside. And he tells you it's full of stardust, twinkling, beautiful stardust. And he takes some of it out with his hand and he sprinkles it all over your head. Oh my, you feel your eyes closing. You begin to feel your feet falling asleep. Cecil tells you it's time to rest now. After all, that is what you came here for. You are all snuggled up on your bean bag now with your marshmallow pillow and your marshmallow blanket feeling all yummy inside with your hot chocolate drink. And your breathing starts to slow down and your little eyes don't want to open. You can feel yourself drifting to sleep. You can hear Cecil's voice quietly in the background. You have no idea what he's saying. You only know that you feel so safe and so loved as you drift deeper and deeper into a lovely night's sleep. So just sleep now. And with Cecil's help, you will have the sweetest dreams ever. Night, night. Now imagine you're walking on a quiet forest path in the most beautiful forest you have ever seen. And as you're walking, you know that this is an ancient forest. And this forest is very special. And you are very safe, very loved, and very protected. You take a big, deep breath in. And as you do, you can smell the fresh scent of pine in the air. And as you breathe out, you feel yourself relaxing more and more with each step that you take. And the trees are all around you. And you can feel their wise energy surrounding you as you step deeper and deeper beneath the wonderful canopy of leaves. The sun is shining and there is a gentle breeze on your face and it ruffles your hair just a little bit and the warmth of the sun makes you feel all tingly inside and you feel very happy here. You notice that your attention is captured with watching the squirrels and the rabbits darting about. The squirrels are racing up and down the trees. The rabbits playing and running about chasing each other and they really are having fun. And you notice the birds flying and hopping from place to place singing their songs. And all the other wildlife at work and at play. It's a very busy place this forest of yours. Now imagine what it would be like to enjoy yourself and have fun just like these little creatures. Exploring, discovering and playing. Maybe you'd like to fly like a bird. Or climb a tree like a squirrel and be carefree. Or maybe you would just like to run like the rabbits. What fun that would be. But you don't do any of that today because today you are just walking around the forest, breathing in fresh clean air in the warm sunshine. So you continue on your path, smiling, thinking about the beautiful little creatures who are having so much fun together. And you see up ahead of you, there's a little clearing. And as you enter the clearing, it's very quiet. And it feels magical and enchanted. And you look around and you notice that there is a small house at the end of the clearing. 
Well, it's not so small, really. It's about the size of a small cabin. And it's also in the shape of a very large mushroom. It has a little porch running all around it. And you can see that on the porch of this mushroom-shaped cabin, that there is a lovely old hammock slowly swinging in the gentle breeze. Now it's a white house and it has a round red roof with white spots on it and a little red door. It has big pots on the porch too with lots of colourful flowers in them and there are daffodils growing all over the place and it looks delightful and you wonder who lives there. So you walk towards it and as you do you see glints of sparkly lights darting in and out behind the trees they are at the back of the little house but you're not afraid and you wonder what it could be it kind of looks like little fairies darting in and out of the trees how wonderful would that be if you could actually see one but you continue to walk to the house and you decide to knock on the little red door to see if anyone is at home but before you can the door opens and out walks two little girls and a little boy and they're all carrying little baskets. They stop when they see you. And you smile at them and they come towards you. They all have the most amazing, big, kind eyes and the most beautiful smiles. And they say hello to you. And they tell you that their names are Delilah, Madeline and Holden. So you tell them your name. Delilah tells you that they are going foraging for mushrooms for their dinner and they ask you if you would like to go with them. Well, of course you say yes. You say, yes, please, thank you very much. So she hands you a little basket. The four of you set off into the trees at the back of the little mushroom house. And as you walk, Madeline tells you that there are only certain mushrooms that you can forage for because some of them are not very good to eat. Some of them can make you quite sick. But she says not to worry, as she will show you which ones are safe to pick. Well, that's okay then. Holden rushes off ahead and says, Follow me, I know where they grow. He gives a little laugh and then skips off, with the three of you catching up behind him. Suddenly, Holden stops and with a big grin, points to the mushrooms he's found. Delilah, stops and looks at the mushrooms and gives an excited laugh. She tells you that there are many varieties of mushrooms growing here, but she says it's very unusual because some of these mushrooms don't grow in this country at all. But because they live in this very special, magical place, they find them all the time. And she names some of the mushrooms she sees. There are button mushrooms, which are the white ones and the ones that most people like to eat. And there are cremini mushrooms. They usually grow in Italy. There are portobello mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, porcini mushrooms, and many, many more. Wow, that's a lot of mushrooms, you think to yourself. Madeline tells you, when you're foraging for mushrooms, you must only select mushrooms that are firm and have a smooth appearance. She says not to pick any that have any spots or marks on them. And she says, never pick any moist or slimy ones. They are really yucky. So for a little while, go and forage for mushrooms with Delilah, Madeline and Holden. See how many you can pick. And don't forget, you're picking them for their dinner. So you'll need lots and lots of them. So go and have some fun.
That was fun, wasn't it? So the three of you go back to the little mushroom house with the red door, with your baskets filled up to the very brim with mushrooms. You have button mushrooms, porcini mushrooms, and portobello mushrooms, and they look very tasty indeed. As you reach the little mushroom house, the door opens and a lady pops out. And she is a children's mama. She tells you that her name is Jill. Holden tells her your name, and she is very pleased that the children have made a new friend. And she asks you if you would like to stay for dinner, especially as you help to pick all the tasty mushrooms. Oh, yes, I would love to. Thank you very much. So you step inside the house, which is very lovely. There are big settees, big squishy cushions on them. There's a big wooden table for you all to sit at when you have your dinner. But you all trudge into the kitchen, carrying your baskets. And you meet two more people. One is a man called Zach, who tells you that he is the children's papa. And there is another lovely lady called Lindsay. And she is the children's bonus mum. How cool is that? These children have two mums. Two mums means lots of hugs and kisses. And dads give hugs and kisses too. Now because the four of you have done all the foraging, Jill and Lindsay prepare the food for you all, while Sack sets the table and cuts some butter's lovely fresh crusty bread. So you all take your seats at the table, and after a short while, all the food is ready and gets placed on the table. And Delilah tells you that they are having mushroom soup for dinner, followed by a great big mushroom tart made with cream cheese and nutty pastry with lots of salad and fresh fruit and this ice cream for pudding. Well, I must say, that sounds rather delicious to me. Lindsay tells you to tuck in and help yourself to all the lovely smelling food. So, just to be polite, of course, you do. After you've eaten your wonderful dinner and you're feeling very full up indeed, you tell your new friends that it's time for you to go home now. So you stand up and you thank them all very much for letting you come into their home and be with them. You thank Delilah, you thank Madeline and Holden for taking you to pick the very tasty mushrooms and have lots and lots of fun with them. The children walk with you to their little front door and wave you off. And they tell you that you can come again to forage for mushrooms with them any time you want. And you smile and you turn, you wave goodbye and you begin to walk home. But you feel so happy right now. You are so grateful to have met these wonderful children, Delilah, Madeline, and Holden, and their lovely mama and papa, Jill and Zach. And of course, not forgetting Lindsay, their bonus mum. Oh, but you can't wait to come back. Maybe next time you can bring a mushroom recipe with you too. Maybe you can try that one out. But for now, just breathe in gently and breathe out slowly. Again, breathe in gently 
and breathe out slowly. You can feel your eyes beginning to close now. And you just breathe in gently. Breathe out slowly. And you feel so peaceful, so happy. And you feel so calm as you start to fall into a beautiful sleep. And you drift into sleep thinking about your new, very kind and very lovely friends. Delilah, Madeline and Holden. Night night. Sweet dreams. Now imagine that you're standing on a secluded beach and the sand is beautiful and very white and it's very early in the morning and you're sitting barefoot on the sand you're just sitting there watching the sunrise and feeling very happy you can see all its glorious colours as it slowly rises up to begin the new day and you can hear the rhythmic sounds of the waves as they gently come up onto the shore and you can hear the seabirds soothe and swoop as they fly above you and it brings you comfort a feeling of deep peace and happiness because they look happy too the ocean mist is cool on your face and you can smell the salty air you can even taste it you can even smell the seaweed and the sand smells clean and fresh You sit there, watching the sun rise gradually from the sea, changing the sky from a dark blue to a brilliant yellow and orange colour. And it makes the rolling waves sparkle as the sunlight dances on it. And it's like a thousand tiny lights, all shining and dancing just for you. You take a good look around you and you notice the further along the beach are some lovely rocks and you can go and explore them. Maybe there's even some rock pools too. So you stand up and you walk towards them, listening to the ocean waves as they come up onto the sand, gently coming in to cover shells and bits of seaweed. And as you watch the waves retreat back into the ocean, ebbing and flowing, backwards and forwards, over and over again. You reach the rocks and begin to explore what you can find. You climb over some smaller rocks that are a bit craggy and they're not that easy to walk on. So you decide to be a bit more careful. After all, you don't want to slip and fall over now, do you? I know I wouldn't. You move on to more rocks. These are a bit bigger now. Surely there must be a rock pool there, you think to yourself. You come across a nice little group of rocks and decide to sit down and have a little mooch around them. And to your delight, there is a lovely rock pool there just for you to explore. You find a nice smooth rock to sit on and put your bare feet in the cool water. And it feels so nice gently moving your feet around in the water. But keep your eyes open for crabs or maybe a little fish who may have gotten trapped when the tide went back out. If they are in the pool, they will have to wait for the tide to come back in again so they can swim along home. As you look around the rocks, you see that there are a lot of different rocks. Some of them have a rough texture, while some of them feel quite smooth. Some of them are pokey, craggy and grainy. Some of them are lumpy, gritty, rocky and bristly. Some of them have a rather smooth texture and look glossy and silky. Some of them have a rather smooth texture and look glossy and silky. And some of them feel a bit velvety and even slimy. But you don't mind how they feel. You like all of them. As you sit there with your feet in the lovely cool water, you hear a muffled sound. And you wonder where it's coming from because you can't see anyone because there's no one else on this beautiful beach, just you. 
you hear the sound again. Then you hear a little voice saying, You're squashing me, please get off me. You jump up and look down at the rock you were sitting on. No, it couldn't be, could it? The sound you heard was coming from the rock, but that can't be right, rocks can't talk. Just then, the rock slowly begins to move. The rock you were sitting on unfolds itself and you see a little face peering out at you. You were squashing me, so I had to tell you to move, said the little rock. You are absolutely flabbergasted. The rock is talking to you. How can that be? The little rock sees that you are confused and says to you, Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. My name is Jacob and you are sitting with me and my family. We are the guardians of the little sea creatures who sometimes get trapped when the tide goes out and can't get home. So we watch over them until the tide comes back in again. We are called Punkymots. And we live in the sea mostly. But some of us become guardians. So we live on the land too to protect the sea creatures. As you watch, more of the rocks begin to move. And they unfurl themselves. And what you see is really quite amazing. They all have lovely little smiley faces beautiful big kind eyes and they kind of look like chunky dolls but made of rock but they're very nice they all introduce themselves to you and tell you their names but there are so many of them you can't remember them all and it's wonderful you're surrounded by lovely smiley rocks they tell you that they were all born in the sea and that is their home and they tell you that sometimes they get to go back for a holiday, but they do love being on the land too. They ask you if you'd like to sit with them for a while and chat. Also, they say you can help them protect the little sea creatures trapped in the pool. Well, of course you say yes, you would love to. And you can tell them all about you and where you live. So sit for a while and chat with the Punkymots and get to know them. Maybe they are just like you.
Wow, that was fun, wasn't it? Talking to the Punky Mutts. But they tell you it's time for you to go now as the tide will be coming in soon and they don't want you to get trapped too. Neither do you. So you stand up and say thank you and goodbye to the Punky Mutts and you promise that you will come back and see them again. You walk back along the sandy beach and as if by magic, you find that you are in your very own bed again, feeling all warm and snuggly beneath the covers. And as you lie there, you remember the sounds of the ocean. You remember the sounds of the birds as they flew above you. You remember how happy you feel right now. But most of all, you remember the wonderful kind and loving punky mutts who live their lives to help all the little sea creatures. So remember, next time you are out and about, take a good look at any rocks you may see. They might not be just any rocks, they may be punky mutts. Maybe they're there protecting other creatures too. Keep your eyes open when you're out. But you are breathing quietly and gently now. And you feel so wonderful. You feel so tired. So very sleepy now. But so very, very happy. And you are drifting deeper and deeper into a beautiful, restful sleep so peaceful, so calm, so very safe. Night, night. <laughs>